Not do that, Senator Sanders. Ms. Burwell, thank you very much for being here. Uh, I look at your opening remarks and, and you indicate that your primary focus will be deficit reduction, increased efficiency and effectiveness in how government works and targeted investments mm. that grow the economy and create jobs. Uh, it, it seems to me those are all important initiatives. Are uh, you missing one that's very important? And that is the issue of distribution of wealth and income in this country. Uh, in the last several years, we have seen modest economic growth, but it didn't mean anything to working families because all of the increase in income went to the top 1%. As one of the major financial advisors, if you are uh, appointed uh, to the president, is, ish ish is the issue of distribution of wealth and income, which is now the widest of any major country on earth and worse than at any time since the 1920s. Is that an issue of concern to you? Yes, sir, Senator, it is. The issue of that and how a healthy economy, to me, the definition of a healthy economy actually includes the point you're making, which I think is a very important point. Healthy means not just, it means, for a few, it means across the economy as we think about what happens when there is growth. And so thinking about it broadly is something that is important to me, Senator. So is it of major concern to you that between 2009 and 2011, all ALL of the new income went to the top 1%? Uh, Senator, it is a concern and one that while I have not seen the President's budget, I think there is uh, the President's announcement about the minimum wage issues is one that I think is important. Yeah, it is, but cuts in Social Security are also important which will move us in exactly the wrong uh, direction. Uh, in terms of revenue, and I know Senator Warner raised the issue, um, in 2012 at 15.8 percent, uh, revenue uh, as a percentage of GDP was the lowest in 60 years. And yet at a time when corporate profits are at an all-time high, uh, corporate income tax revenue as a percentage of GDP is near a record low. Corporate profits all-time high, it's a percentage of GDP, corporate revenue is an all-time low. Uh, the President has just brought forth a budget in which he wants to see tax reform as revenue neutral. When one out of four major corporations pay zero in taxes, do you not think that, that we have an opportunity to bring in substantial amounts of revenue as part of uh, corporate tax reform? Senator, I, I think that the, 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 when we think about revenue and think about it in its entirety and those percentages and how they work, I think we're up to 17 percent when we include ATRA uh, and the effects of that. And so moving in that direction, I think as you and I have discussed, I do believe there is an opportunity in the revenue space. As we think about the corporate issue, and again, I will defer to my colleagues at Treasury, and I think uh, Director Liu will be here uh, tomorrow, will be actually on the other side tomorrow. Uh, talking about these issues, I would defer to them. But I think the questions of how we think about corporate tax issues and tax overall, when I think about tax overall, I think about three principles, simplicity, progressivity, uh, and thinking about its contribution to deficit reduction. Well, uh, in 2011, corporations pay just 12 percent of their profits and taxes, the lowest since 1972. Before we cut programs like Social Security or Medicare, do you not think it's a good idea that we look to corporate America for more tax revenue? Senator, I think a balanced or comprehensive approach to the issues of deficit reduction require us to look at all options uh, as we think through things. I think the question of in the corporate tax space are the changes that we need, uh, broadening of the base and a closing of the loopholes that will then, as the economy gains steam, result in changes in revenue. Um, why do you think uh, the issue of health care has appropriately enough been discussed by a number of senators? At the end of the day, the United States spends almost twice as much per capita on health care as any other major nation. We are the only major country on earth without a national health care program guaranteeing health care to all people. Do you think there might be a connection between the fact that we spend so much, our outcomes are often not as good as other countries, and we don't have a national health care program. Uh, 
I think that the issue of, of health care cost and actually provision of health care are ones that are both equally important, uh, both the cost issue and actually the provision of care uh, as a nation, which is why I think the Affordable Care Act is an important part of a step forward in providing well, an my, my, to that. My cost. question was, is I don't think we have a Medicare or a Medicaid problem. We have a health care problem. Our health care system spends, as a nation, almost twice as much as many other countries, and our health care outcomes in many cases are worse. We are the only na major nation without a national health care system. system. Do you think there's a connection in the fact that we spend so much and we don't have a system? I think the, the question of what is at the root cause probably a number of things, but I think you articulate, I agree with what you articulated, is that connection between cost and outcome. And then I think the question is, is what is the best way to get that connection between outcome and cost? Because I think we often, in the construct of our current systems, have trouble doing that. And Do that we have a health care system? I was not aware that we had a health care system in America. When I use the phrase health care system, I meant broadly for the nation as a whole in terms not, of the marketplace. Yes. Marketplace, yes. And do you think that marketplace health care system might be one of the reasons we spend almost twice as much as any other country on health care? The role of private, for-profit health insurance companies? I think that it is a combination, and I will come back to what I think is a core point, which is how do we align the outcomes with what we're paying for. And I think that gets to some of the parts of the conversation that we've had in a number of different places. And I think at the root of trying to bend those curves and get those, both the cost down and the quality of the result up. When people are trying to measure what they're doing against an outcome, in other words, a health result, I think that makes a difference. We had conversations in yesterday's hearing about this with regard to looking at some of the results that both Cleveland Clinic and Mayo are having in terms of the quality of their outcome in a cost-efficient manner. And I think that's at the root of the issue. Okay, my time has long expired. Thanks. Madam Thank Chair. you very much. Uh, Senator Sessions, did you have any final? Thank you, Thank you so much, um, Madam Chairman, for the hearing. And I appreciate you, Ms.